What's up, guys? Here we are finishing up $8,500. Well, almost. We're not quite at $8,500, and plus, I will be paying commissions on it probably around $50 a commission. So uh, I'm up about $8,400 all on, and I don't even know if I need to even say it anymore. I N D O. Now, if if you call yourself a momentum uh, trader or a, a penny stock trader of low float and you're not trading INDO, then then I don't know what you're doing. And I know I know it sounds mean, but you know some some people need a little kick in the pants because it's like you know what you're you're totally missing the main show. You know you call yourself a momentum trader, but you're not even you're not even trading what everyone else is trading you're not even trading the most obvious stock and indo is is been the most obvious stock for almost two weeks at least to me uh, i know uh some some other big youtube traders have not really been focusing on indo as much as i have and i think it's to their own uh, it's 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 not helping them uh, i made i just looked uh since trading INDO, um, I guess uh, it's not pulled up, but I've made $36,000 on INDO uh, almost just in the past two weeks. In fact, uh, exactly almost in the past two weeks. I made $20,000 this week trading INDO. So, and, and before that, the biggest... Uh, when I had on a single stock was AMC from last year, and that was around twenty three thousand. Uh, not on one day, but uh, over the course of a few days, when there's a lot of people trading, when there was a lot of people trading AMC. Now I made a lot of money on the day that it went to seventy two. I was there for that, but there was also residual momentum, and INDO has been similar, where there's just been residual momentum. With today being probably the most uh, explosive, uh, it went. And it, and it still can go completely parabolic. I was just when I just lo when I just logged on here, it had just broken the high again at 32, flushed. But still, the fact that it came down all the way here and came right back up, there's, this stock has a lot of strength. And so again, I say, if you're not trading I and DO, then I would say, uh, what what are you doing? I would seriously reconsider uh, what you're doing because. I mean, this this is the stock to trade now. Yeah, I get it. It's it's volatile. It's it's kind of tricky. There's big spreads. Then just reduce your share size. At least practice. At least you know. I wouldn't even be I wouldn't even be wasting my time with any other stock. Now, yeah, I'm coming off a little rude here, but uh, I think it's to your own benefit. I mean, I could be all flower and uh, flowers and roses and butterflies and say, oh, good job, Johnny. It's not going to help you, and and I mean it when I say that you, if you're not trading INDO, then then you're making a big big doo doo mistake. Especially if you call yourself a momentum trader, low float trader, whatever you want to call it, penny stock trader. So enough of that, because uh, there was a time when I didn't trade stocks over ten dollars. I just didn't, and. Things changed when I decided one day to say, you know what, there's no other good opportunities on the stocks below ten dollars. Everyone's making money on the stocks above ten dollars, but I suck at trading it. So you know what I did? I started trading with really small size, a small enough size to where I could I could logically make decisions. I could see the price action. I could see what worked and what didn't. And I didn't lose all my money. I didn't backtrack on my. I didn't ruin my averages on the year. And slowly over time, it's just like now I almost only like to trade stocks over ten dollars. So uh, that's sort of my words of, uh, I guess you could say encouragement. I know it doesn't sound that way. I, uh, I I'm one to say, you know, what's on my mind. I'm not gonna hold back. And you know, sometimes they say stuff that hurts people, but it's really to their own, you know, if they if they take it the right way and they actually listen, then, then they'll benefit from it, I think. If they're stubborn, they want to do the things their own way, well, you know, my brother did that, and you know what? He's not a day trader. 
you tried to you listen to me a little bit but then on some areas where i'm like you really need to listen to me here he didn't listen to me you know and so he's not a day trader that's okay i i like to take all the glory i like to you know be you know the one in the million but uh, i also would have loved to have seen him succeed just because uh you know it can be it can change your life it, it really does uh, i know it changed mine so that's why I say the things I say. But INDO. INDO today was... Now, the daily chart was okay. It was n not the best at the start. That's why I'm saying it's just it was just okay. And I'm going to go ahead and delete all these... All these... Um, okay. Well, click the wrong thing there. Clear drawing set. Enter. At the start of the day, we were here uh, at $22, and it was looking like it was going to be an inside day. Now, of course, we, I thought and other people thought that they had potential to break 25, what is it, 25, 25? Or in this case, yeah, I think it's 25, 25. And we knew that if it broke that level, it was, it was blue skies. It was, there was no resistance historically that would hold us up that I know of. Uh, so we knew I knew that there was potential here now it started off uh, pretty shaky and I struggled on it I struggled on it out of the gates but not as bad as yesterday I was able to quickly catch a win that looks like that was yesterday's chart let me where's today's chart here we go this is pre-market pre-market here we go so out of the gates uh, it just started to go. Let me let me uh, let me try to zoom out here, and, and my fan is kicking on on my MacBook because it's terrible thermals on it. So sorry about the the fan noise. Right out of the gates, INDO started to move, and I must say that I got aggressive on it pretty quick. Now, I got up to $1,000 really quick, and then I, I chopped around a bit. I would say that I chopped around quite a bit today because there was many moments where I would get in, like, in, say, for example, in this area, expecting the break of this pivot, and then it would, it would drop or it would fake out. I do remember very clearly trying to hold through this, this area here for the break of this pivot, knowing that there was a high probability it would break. But it wasn't as quick as of a, a, as a quick of a, a resolution as I would have liked there was a lot of a lot of these candles coming here testing testing uh, support and so when I would get in with uh, 2200 shares and it would drop 30 cents on me or 10 20 cents I would lose 400 bucks uh, really quickly and I I would I would sell out now you're like oh you should have sold out uh, it ended up ripping well duh but in the moment when this candle is bobbing between red and green and I'm seeing I would say there was a pretty aggressive selling on it, selling pressure for the most part, I would say. And I was afraid that we would get a quick flush down. I was afraid of big flushes all throughout the day. Like even even after this and I was up maybe 1500 bucks, I didn't buy this two bar pullback right away. I think I did try to scalp late on it. And then I, I think I did buy right here for the break of this pivot up here, catching some. But the best entry would have been down here buying this up. I didn't do that. I, I got in here, chopped around. So my P&L was relatively choppy. Uh, now, I did buy this right down here. Uh, I knew that setup of it, you know, wait for it to break, then see if it gets bought up to a bottoming tail. It, did ended, up, it ended up doing exactly that. Got in here. I probably got in around 2480, sold in here. But I did miss this. I was not expecting this. I was expecting something like this, you know. Something where it goes up, breaks the pivot just a little bit, and then crashes. So this is a little bit unexpected, and that that kind of maybe explains why it was such an explosive move. Because I'm guessing some shorts started to short this up at 2660 up in here, and then when it gave this this next push, then those people had to cover. They they got stuck in a losing trade. They marketed out, bulls marketed in. Uh, so I don't know if I exactly how much I made on that uh, but it was I think 
in this area too so it just slowly i would i would make a thousand lose 500 and make a thousand lose 500 that was very much the case for today uh, a lot of times i would catch these these uh these drops here because because every drop was was getting bought up basically and also every pop was getting it was getting shorted as well for most part because you, you like for example you see here break a 30 well then we get we get this this it's kind of like a fake out flush i would maybe call it but it holds it holds and this just represents what indo is all about which is which is holding and holding faking out shorts right here we get a big drop you, th you think it's done and then it comes right back up uh, but i i do remember let's see i shut down right here on the break of 30. i thought i thought you know break of 30 that's a pretty impressive move coming from 22 dollars about so I didn't want to push it in. It was it was on I think this break of th of up here that I sold uh, that I stopped trading and that got me up to eighty four hundred. So I am at my highs today. Now I, I, this easily could have been a ten thousand twelve thousand dollar day, uh, but my sister wanted to go to Starbucks. I was worried that I might lose what I made just because of how quick this thing could move. I mean, when it moves, it moves to the up and to the down. Because there's a lot, there's a lot of big players in the stock right now. This is not, this is not, uh, you know, this is not exactly. And I'm, I'm trying to find the words for it. I don't want to say it's not exactly easy because to me it was pretty easy, as far as reading the price action, knowing when we'll at least get, you know, uh, a bottoming tail or or say a pop. Because I would say. The, the bulls were aggressive on this, but the shorts were too, at least at the start, because you'd get the break and then you'd get a flush. You'd get the break, you get a flush, and then you'd get a unexpected rip, pullback. This wasn't even the cleanest one minute bull flag, but it still worked over the course of like three minutes. Then it chopped here for a bit, and then lo and behold, bottoming tail, and then it, it pulled back here. So. There was there was curveballs in here, and I, I understand that a lot of people had probably struggled on it because I know I struggled. It was uh, like I said, it was up a thousand, down five hundred, up a thousand. Luckily, I finished up at, at my highs. Right now, uh, when I just logged back on, I had just broken the high of day. I wouldn't be surprised if, I mean, I, at this point, don't be surprised if anything. This thing might be going to a hundred dollars over the course of next week. This, this is the start of every big move is, is something like this where it just keeps going day after day. Shorts keep getting smoked on it. They keep thinking it's going to drop short after this big drop. And then next thing you know, they're they're cashing out for a, for a decent loss here at the break of high day. Now, they're lucky that this didn't continue ripping because ha had this gotten going at 32, that's when it – when stocks get up this high, that's when they start going parabola, parabolic. They start skipping dollars. They start. It'll be. It'll be a thirty-two. Next thing you know, it's like thirty-four. It will happen like that. Next thing you know, it's thirty-six, thirty-eight. Halted, forty-five. You know, I've seen that happen. Now that could have happened here, but it didn't. Uh, so I'm glad I wasn't there for that. I looking back, I shut down at the right time. I locked in, a pretty, uh, probably one of the bigger wins I've had in a long, long time since the market because the market has been pretty dry so far january february yeah february was good i, I can't complain I, I made good money in january i made good money in february and i'm off to a great start here already in in uh, march i'm trying to look at here i'm already up just under let's see 18 19 000. i'm up eighteen thousand dollars on the month just basically on this week starting tuesday was march 1st so i'm off to a great start maybe march is my best month ever now and I, i'm expecting the the market to cool down a little bit uh, going forward but it, it might not the indo might provide a whole nother week of momentum i might be able to squeeze out another 10 grand out of indo next week who knows but I do know that eventually INDO is not going to provide an opportunity and it's going to actually pro provide, it's going to pose a serious risk. If I'm not able to realize it, I can lose a lot of money really fast. If I just, if I get stuck in a rut, if I get frustrated, 
but I don't plan on doing that. I'm, I'm, my discipline is, uh, is in a better place than it's been in a long time. I've been really working on discipline recently, just following the rules, discipline, 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 and the profits will follow. And that's, so far, that's been true. Uh, luckily, we've had INDO. I mean, I can't just force money out of the market with discipline. You have to have a good stock, but it's, it's when you have a good stock, good momentum, you have a good strategy, you know what you're doing, you know the potential of these stocks, you have good discipline, you know when to walk away. When those come together, that's when money can really be made. Now I can have discipline, really good discipline, but if I don't have a really good stock, then I can't make a lot of money, but in that case, then I won't lose a lot. So that's still, it's still a very important uh, part of being profitable is in the slow periods, is offense and defense. You have to be good at both. So, um, INDO might might take off later today. I just wouldn't be surprised. I come back at two at one o'clock and it's up at forty dollars. That wouldn't surprise me one bit. Would also wouldn't surprise me one bit if we're down at like twenty four dollars, twenty two dollars. Anything is possible. That's I hate when people say things like it's a hundred percent fact. Like oh, it's got to drop. Oh, it's it's like no, it doesn't have to. Anything is possible. So. You know, you have to manage your risk. You have to, you can't get into that mindset of, you know, that it's 100% going to go to $50. No, it's not 100%. Now, very well could, looking at the daily, daily is, is incredibly strong. This, this, I mean, we just keep zooming out here. This could set up for, what is it, Friday today? This, on Monday, this could be pre-market $35. Catch the right momentum, we're up at $75 on Monday. That could happen that very well could happen and i maybe i'm gonna uh, maybe i'll maybe i'll uh make a bet with somebody that it'll be up above 50 dollars on monday or something i don't know but this is what every super major parabolic move starts out to look like it's it's it, it goes up it goes up and you're like oh it's done it's done and then it goes up it goes up pretty soon it's like it's beyond what anyone thought it just like gamestop just like amc it just once it gets going, it goes and goes and goes further than anyone ever thought. And then just when everyone's like, oh, okay, uh, maybe I'll give it a stab. And then that's when it finally goes down. Yeah, so that, that's usually how it works. You got to really be a forward thinker in trading. You can't, you can't be slow. You have to be, you have to have an imagination. You have to be creative and understand. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm at a loss for words, but forget that um i think i'm gonna cut it here i i just see i'm at 18 minutes already so i'm gonna cut it there great day uh, great week probably my i think this is my record week and right now my my youtube channel just looks almost like it's a fake channel just because of all the green and all these big numbers is like well i'm at a record i'm breaking all sorts of records right now so eventually it will slow down eventually i'm gonna have to be content with small green days and even small red days hopefully hopefully small red days uh, but this week this week was just incredible uh, ending on ending yesterday 6400 today 8400 it j every day pro progressively got better this week monday 1400 tuesday almost 1600 wednesday 2500 almost thursday 6400 friday 8400 all on i n d o okay so if you're not <laughs> Back to my original statement, if you're not trading INDO, then, then what are you doing? You're not with the program, in my opinion. And if you can disagree with me and you can you can be butt hurt all you want, but at the end of the day, I think it's, I think it's just, uh, just a fact that if you call yourself a momentum trader or a trading low flow and you're not at least practicing on INDO or at least giving it a shot, then you're, just, you're not with the program. And if you, if you don't, you know, if you don't uh, swallow your pride and and listen, just like my my brother didn't, then then you're gonna just be stuck in limbo, and you'll probably just give up eventually. And that's okay. That's okay too. Uh, this business is not for everyone. It's not gonna work out for everyone. And at some point, uh, I think for some people, they might just need to call it before they you know lose all their money or something. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, I don't want this going past 20 minutes. So. Uh, I will see you guys. I'll be back on Monday with a recap, uh, and uh, hopefully we will have some good momentum. 
All right. Take it easy, guys.